Welcome. Once in a while, we get an opportunity to see the process of scientific misinformation happen in real time. We're getting that opportunity now, and it's because of the misrepresentation of this conference abstract that I discussed with the first author yesterday. It'll be linked up here. As I reflect on this, I'm really, really impressed with Yakov Efimenko, the first author. Um, he's, consider his position. He's a medical student. He's been doing research in urology. He was brought into a project. Let me show that project. He was involved in this project, which was published last year in the Journal of the American Medical Association. He's acknowledged in this project. He had been doing other research. And then on that basis, he went forward and started looking at a database um, that is, has uh, lots of information as he, as he discussed. And he started looking at uh, COVID and uh, different treatments. And he ended up doing a piece of work on comparing in this retrospective cohort study, comparing ivermectin and another treatment, remdesivir. Now, these are very different treatments. Remdesivir is an intravenous antiviral. Ivermectin is, is taken orally. So that means remdesivir is always given in um, a hospital setting. Ivermectin is not. Patients have these different, have very different characteristics, as you might expect. There were lots of things that they didn't control for, but he did the work and public, put the work out in a conference as an abstract. Um, and it was, it was part of this conference last year. And just last week, the conference abstracts were published in a special issue, as happens very often in journals. They'll associate with a conference, have a special issue with conference abstracts. Now, in the meantime, Yakov and his co-workers wrote up a full paper, sent it out. They got feedback. They had identified and the reviewers apparently identified a number of issues that ultimately made them decide not to move forward with it because it wasn't strong enough. Now, as a young scientist, as a young researcher, uh, Yakov is learning a lot. And I certainly remember my point at a similar stage in my career when I was finishing my PhD, every publication mattered. It was, uh, you know, something where it was it, you started down a road and, and it, it would be difficult to decide that you didn't want to see something to completion. It always is, but it's especially difficult early in the career. And Yakov took this in stride. And as we discussed yesterday, he took this in stride and they ultimately decided that it was really not appropriate to go ahead and even try to publish this study because of the numerous unaccountable uh, confounding factors and other issues, as well as the advancing uh, uh, randomized clinical trials that had shown that this was, you know, a not, not a, a, reasonable, um, a reasonable avenue of, of treatment investigation. So that was what they did. And they moved on. And then one day, Yaakov woke up and saw this uh, um, he got a message from his advisor. He saw these things had been, um, his abstract had been um, misrepresented and misused by a number of different prominent sources. And if we actually look at the abstract here, so this is the abstract itself. You can see it's quite short because this, you know, it's an abstract. But we can also look at the news mentions here. Let me zoom in on that a little bit so you can see the news mentions, a, a couple of news mentions, basically this shows up in, where does it show up? It shows up in the Epoch Times, which is uh, an anti, well, among other things, an anti-vax organ, excuse me. But then on social media, it has tens of thousands of, um, tens of thousands of shares. So Yakov and his coworkers woke up to this, woke up to this couple of mentions in the in the news media and 18,000 mentions on social media. 18,000 mentions on social media. That included the mentions that he uh, that we discussed yesterday. But it, as I was looking uh, at putting in the details, filling in the details for that video, I also noticed that amazingly, it's his abstract has already been included 
in the meta-analysis that is done at IVM Meta, which is a pro-ivermectin, it's an anonymous, very pro-ivermectin website that um, claims to be doing a meta-analysis, but they're very selective in their meta-analysis in which and when they include and exclude studies. So if we look at the results that they have here and go down and we can see here in the early treatment, let me zoom in on that. We can see in the early treatment, here is Yakov's study, All right? So it's ya Yakov's study is now represented in this meta, or I mean his, I call it a study. It's an abstract, right? There's extraordinarily little that one can do to evaluate this study, but it's included in the meta-analysis provided by um, IVM Meta, and it is uh, included as favoring, dramatically favoring ivermectin. Now, I looked at the most recent results that are um, considered in this website, and among those results, the other most recent result that they've considered from the research literature is this paper from PLOS One. And this paper from PLOS One finds that uh, patients did worse with ivermectin. A high mortality was found, but basically patients' uh, treatment with ivermectin and uh, azithromycin was associated with higher mortality. That's uh, a finding. This is um, uh, a study in Peru, and IVM Meta decided that this peer-reviewed study in the literature that is a full paper is excluded from their meta-analysis. Um, as often happens, the papers that don't favor ivermectin have been excluded from their meta-analysis. But that's not all. It continues to go forward, even though Yakov and his co-authors have explicitly stated that the analysis or the interpretations, uh, the misrepresentations of their results are uh, not reasonable and not supportable, it continues to go on. So I woke up this morning and checked and this grifter is out here basically doing something and he's got a video where he goes through Yakov's abstract. And of course, like night follows day, Dr. Mobin has got one where he's got one, a 13 minute video with his characteristic drawings. He describes it as the largest association study in the world. And he goes on in a lot of detail, but without any of the of the reservations, it's you know typical pro ivermectin grifting, where uh, they're just picking up on the most minimal result that they can find, and turning it into something that is a bombshell and dramatic. Um, that's pretty much all I have for this. Uh, I just wanted to give people the opportunity to see this misinformation explosion happening in real time which is what we're seeing. Uh, it's a shame, uh, but it is totally predictable. So that's about it. If you've liked this content, feel free to give it a like, subscribe. Um, if it's helpful or if you have comments, leave me a comment. Let me know what you'd like to see next. And in the meantime, stay safe.